Hi everyone, this uh, is going to be a quick teardown video of a Peeps 457 Avalanche transceiver. And uh, for those of you that don't know what these are, they're uh, little radio transmitters that people who go into the backcountry ski touring, um, they wear them uh, close to their body and it's turned on and it's transmitting a signal. In fact, everybody in the party will wear one of these and they're all transmitting a little signal and it's a safety device if um, somebody gets caught and buried in an avalanche um, the uh, their companions can turn their their beacons on to uh, search and they can actually home in on the buried subjects beacon and then find them and dig them out um, it's uh, if someone is buried too long, in fact, probably more than 20 minutes, they will they have a very high chance of dying from suffocation, or they can get in, injured to, in the snow as well as they're tumbled down the slope. But uh, the idea is that this device helps you find your buried companions very quickly, and it transmits on a frequency of 457 kilohertz, a very low frequency, and it just beeps every second. And uh, this one was given to me. It's a very old one. Um, they're not; these ones aren't commonly used anymore. The the modern ones are much uh, more sophisticated, um, but they still work the same way. They transmit a signal. And uh, but anyways, I was given this one to use as a target for practicing. So I'd bury this in the snow without a person attached to it, and uh, um, have people go in and try to find it and try to locate it in the snow. Um, but the problem with this one was it was it's old and the batteries had been left in it and they eventually uh, you know what happens to alkaline batteries if they've been sitting too long well these ones puked inside the transceiver and made a bit of a mess of the electronics and it doesn't work very well so what I've done here is as you can see I've already got into it here but I've I had to cut uh, into the plastic here to uh, to get inside and this module here pops off it it's kind of um, unusual I haven't seen this before but it pops off. You can see the connections down at the bottom here. But it's got a, a loudspeaker and a connection for a for an earphone. And that that's how you um, actually use the beacon when you're trying to find a buried one. Is you uh, listen for the beep. And uh, on the top of the beacon here is a volume control. And uh, you just keep turning the volume down till you can just barely hear the signal. And then you keep moving in the direction that the signal gets stronger and stronger and each time you turn the volume down until eventually the volume is at minimum and you're only a couple of meters away from the buried subject hopefully you're right on top of them and then you've located them and then you can get your shovels out and start digging so anyways let's get back into the electronics here so it comes in two halves it was glued together and I just uh, cut off this flange that went all the way around it and uh, and then heated it with a with a heat gun and it uh, softened the glue enough to get it apart. But inside you can see the battery compartment is here. There's two double A's fit in here. And all of this, let's see if I can bring it up, all of this you can see around the, the, the battery terminal there is corroded and on the back as well because of the, the uh, electrolyte from the battery. But uh, you can see the basic um, circuitry in here. There's two crystals. This one here is 457 kilohertz crystal. And this is 454, and the beacon transmits. It's it's sending out a, a pulse of 457 kilohertz energy, um, and it does it for uh, uh, I'm not sure how long, um, a couple hundred milliseconds long, every second. So when you have your beacon on receive and you're listening to the signal, you hear a beep, beep, like that. And I think what they're doing here to make that beep sound is they just beat the 457 or the, this 454. Um, kilohertz frequency against the 457 receive frequency to give you an offset of 3 kilohertz and that's the actual beep that you hear because if you tune this into a radio um, all you hear is a pfft as the quieting happens it's you don't hear the beep so this one this uh, receiver manufactures a beep that you can actually hear but there's a fair bit of circuitry in your amplifiers and so forth and then inside there you can see um, this I think is a gray code device or I'm not sure what it is but you can see there's numerous contacts on it but this is the volume control here so I'm not quite sure um, how they actually do that in here and then down at the end there's an LED and it shines up through this um, this little lens here and this is the battery cover it also functions as a switch so when you 
put the batteries in and you, you uh, lock the cover there it's locked but it's not turned on and then you turn it to the next position and it actually turns it on and what that ends up doing is you can see inside there there's a pin on the uh, um, the battery cover let's get something to point with right there and it contacts this little piece of metal spring here I'll turn it off you can see how the contact goes away and then the, the top of the battery is, connect, is touching that terminal there so what I'm going to do in in this thing here is I'm going to clean up all the uh, corrosion and because uh, it could be shorting out some of the circuitry in here on either side and um, down in here right near the battery door um, there's a bit of corrosion on the circuit board as well. I'm going to try to get this thing right out and do some cleaning. But um, I think the reason there's corrosion there is because this is this is a, in a sealed case, and this is the only opening to the outside world. And I think um, just over the years of being used and opened up, um, a bit of moisture gets in there, and it's corroded the circuit board inside. And I'll try to clean that up as well and see if I can get it functioning. So there is uh, a simple. Oh, another thing I forgot to show you. This is the antenna. And if anybody, if any of you have been into an old AM radio from days past, you will probably have seen this kind of an antenna as well. Although I think they would have more wire wound around it um, because they're slightly higher frequency. And they, there's also uh, probably another section for the FM band as well. But this is a, this is a ferrite rod. It's um, very fragile. If, if I were to drop this, it could shatter. As you can see, it's it's um, rubber mounted here. These little rubber mounts, so it's kind of shock mounted so that it doesn't get damaged as this if this beacon gets dropped or whatever. So there, very quick look at the inside of a uh, um, an avalanche transceiver, also known as an avalanche beacon. So to clean this, I've just poured a little bit of um, isopropyl alcohol onto the. Uh, um, circuit board and started scrubbing it with a scrub brush and uh, it's doing a pretty good job you can see the green on the on the rag here where are we there it is and I just give it a good scrub with the uh, isopropanol and do the same on the other side and that's actually done quite a nice job of cleaning up the corrosion here and you can see the green on the toothbrush that's from the corrosion on the circuit board let's pour a little bit more on and this is just regular drugstore isopropanol and it, it doesn't hurt the circuitry on there it's actually good for getting rid of flux too if you're doing some soldering um, and your circuit board's covered with flux. This is the way you get rid of it. You wash it in isopropanol, and uh, it's a bit toxic. You got to watch the the chemistry here. The alcohol certainly not that good for you, but neither is the flux. And then um, I'll probably just take this into the bathroom and rinse it with warm water, and that that'll get it cleaned off. I think there might be a bit of toothpaste still left on this old toothbrush, although I've been using it for cleaning circuit boards for a while, so I'm not sure why it's a uh, Pull me up so so much, but uh, let's have a let's go wash this in the bathroom and see how it turned out. So here it is after uh, scrubbing with alcohol and then uh, rinsing it in the kitchen sink sink uh, in just plain old warm water, and it's done a pretty nice job of getting rid of the corrosion. Everything looks good and clean again. Just want to show you something here, give you an idea of the age of this thing. Where is it? Underneath there, there, there's a date code. So 95. This was built in 1995. Gives you an idea of how old they are. So after drying, I just inspected the uh, traces here with a magnifying glass, just to make sure that they hadn't been corroded right through. Um, what you're seeing there is the solder mask has been uh, corroded off, but the copper is still intact. And the same on the other side of the board as well. It looks a bit messy, but that's just flaking solder mask. And the gold contacts look good, and they're still connected electrically to their traces. So this is past inspection. It looks pretty good. 
when I get the rest of it apart I can check it out and then I'll put it back together and see if it works. Now I tried to get the board out um, but this device here what what I call the volume control I'm not exactly sure what it what it really is but um, you can see this knob here it rotates it also pulls out and that's how you switch between search this is the send mode or transmit mode and then you pull it out to put it into search mode and I tried prying this knob off but it's stuck on pretty good and I didn't want to damage it because it, this is the only way to to uh, switch the beacon between the two modes and uh, if the knobs not stuck on very well it'll be kinda hard to pull it out so I decided to leave it and uh, I just put a, a, my toothbrush down into here and scrubbed it a bit and cleaned off that contact as well on the switch here and anyways I, I stuck a couple of batteries in here between the, the two terminals and uh, it worked so now I'm going to put it back together and test it with another beacon well I tested the beacon and it didn't work very well so it gave me some incentive to actually get this completely apart turns out the knob here had a, uh, a label on it that I just popped out and then there was one of these uh, retaining clips on the inside and once the knob was off it was really easy to undo the nut that was on here and it went in there and I was able to just get it right out and yes there is quite a bit of corrosion on the uh, circuit board right along there you can see it and um, I'm hoping that's the problem this thing would start up but then it would die quickly after so the transmitting of course takes a lot of power when I put it on receive um, it worked just fine so I think I'm hoping that the corrosion on this um, around this terminal here is the problem and I'll clean it up and maybe it'll work better and what I did also um, off camera here is I, I soldered up the uh, corroded um, traces here just to make sure that they were connected and, and, the, and the traces were in good shape I did it on both sides just uh, daub some uh, liquid flux on there heated up the soldering iron, put some solder on the tip of the iron and just dragged it along the traces to clean them up that did a good job but uh, the next thing I'm going to do is go over this with a bit bit of alcohol like I did before and hopefully that will clean, clean up the problem and get it to work properly alright after some cleaning and scrubbing and rinsing with warm water I've got it to work and I've just hooked it up to a 3.7 volt lithium battery these run off two AA cells which is about 3 volts so it's a little bit more than what it should be but uh, as you can see the LED is flashing there and I've got another beacon um, here that's tuned or turned on to uh, search mode or receive and you can hear the signal that it creates and this is what the beacon looks like let's zoom out <coughs> so this is an example of a modern digital beacon and uh, the old beacon here you had to use your hearing to determine the signal strength or how loud the beep was and uh, turning the volume down as you got closer and closer to the bird subject um, but with this digital beacon it has a microcontroller inside of it and uh, it does all the processing for you and actually gives you a distance reading which is right there it says point nine, well, zero meters and I'm right next to it as I got if I, if I was to get further away from it it would show some distance and um, you can hear the beep as well and also this indicator across here if you're far enough away it'll actually give you a direction it, the arrow will point in the direction that you should be moving to get closer to the beacon so a whole bunch of signal processing is going on inside this modern digital beacon so it can pick up uh, a buried beacon um, the transmits uh, circuitry inside here would be very similar to that except that the the tone is generated or the 457 kilohertz frequency is generated by the uh, the microcontroller. So here it is all uh, reassembled albeit kind of crudely with this uh, electrician's tape to keep it together but I'm never going to use this on a person uh, you know as a safety device it's no longer uh, reliable and uh, I'm just going to use it as a target you just uh, bury it in the snow and uh, with another beacon you you try to find this one a good way to practice. Um, just to show you how it works on the, in the search mode you uh, I've got another beacon in the house beeping away and I'll just you flip that uh, 
volume control switch up and now it's in search mode it's receiving the signal and you uh, turn the volume up to the point that you just see the bottom LED coming on <clears throat> which is about there just barely and then you start moving and looking at the LED and if that bottom LED goes out that means you've moved in the wrong direction you're moving away from the beacon so you turn around and move the other direction and uh, eventually as you get closer the center light will come on like that and then you turn the volume down another notch until just this bottom light is on and then you move again toward in the same direction obviously getting closer and closer and you have to do a little bit of a pattern searching back and forth and left and right and watching these LEDs and when they get brighter you know you're getting closer and when they're getting dimmer you know you're getting farther away and eventually you'll, you'll have the you'll be really close to the beacon and you'll have the volume turned all the way down and then you know that you're very close and you take out an avalanche probe and you start probing the snow and find the subject and dig them out um, but that's a whole new topic for a completely different video series and I won't get into that <clears throat> How I know all about this stuff? Well, in the winter time, I work as a ski guide, and I take people out into the back country to go ski touring, where we walk on our skis, specially designed skis, if you don't already know what they are, and you can walk around and we go and find a nice slope to uh, to climb up and ski down and have a, a great day of skiing in the powder. But uh, there's always a risk of avalanches, so each person in the party has one of these things on um, in their clothing turned on to transmit not receive and uh, if somebody gets caught in an avalanche the uh, other people can actually find them and dig them out. <clears throat> um, as a ski guide I of course work hard to uh, to have some idea about how the snow stability is and I don't go out when the uh, the snow is really unstable and more likely to avalanche. We, uh, we pick different areas or just stay home. Um, part of my job is um, preventing being caught in an avalanche. In fact that's the major part of my job. I don't want to have to dig somebody out. But anyways, um, I hope you enjoyed the teardown of this uh, old school avalanche transceiver. And uh, stick around. I have another one coming up eventually. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, thumbs up. And leave some comments. Catch you the next time. Cheers.